One of the most useful tools you can have in your arsenal of skills is the ability to do what are called electron dot diagrams. Electron dot diagrams are extremely useful because you can use them to design molecules, predict the shapes of molecules, even predict how many bonds an atom is going to form. So far we've taken a look at the nucleus, the protons and the neutrons. We've looked at the electrons and their energy levels and their sublevels and their orbitals. The most important electrons are the ones on the outermost edge of the atom, the ones that are going to interact with electrons from other atoms. They say beauty is only skin deep, and that goes the same for atoms. You see, when atoms bond with each other, the only thing they have to go on are their outermost electrons. We refer to the outermost electrons as the valence electrons. The valence electrons are the electrons that are found in the outermost energy level. The maximum number of valence electrons that any element can have is eight. They belong to the noble gases. Eight valence electrons is referred to as a stable octet. When drawing electron dot diagrams, it's important to note that they're going to fill up in the same way that the S and the P sublevels fill up. You see, because there's a maximum of eight valence electrons, the first two are going to come from the outermost S sublevel, and whatever comes after that's going to be in the outermost P sublevel. You're not going to have D electrons as valence electrons, at least not in the scope of this course. This one electron would give us 3s1, and its box diagram would look like that. Sodium's dot diagram would be a single dot. Magnesium's two valence electrons would be 3s2. Up, down, paired together. Magnesium's two valence electrons are paired. Now, it doesn't matter what side you start putting the dots on. Just for the sake of example, we're going to start by putting the dots on the top. Aluminum has three valence electrons, which would look like 3s2, 3p1. That takes care of the third energy level, s and p. So when we draw the box diagram, so when we draw the dot diagram, we'll have the symbol of aluminum with the 2s electrons paired together and the 1p electron all by itself. Remember, when you do a box diagram, the s's are going to be paired, and the P is going to be all by itself unpaired in the next orbital. Tin has four valence electrons. They're in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth energy level. 5s2, 5p2. That accounts for the four electrons. So that would be 5s up, down, 5 P up, up, because the first two electrons go into separate orbitals. And the dot diagram will reflect that. S, N, here are the two S electrons, then the two P electrons in different orbitals. We say these electrons are unpaired. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. 2S2, 2P3 adds up to the five. 2S, up, down, 2p, and remember the ups go in before anything else does, so we have three unpaired electrons. And when we draw the dot diagram, those are the s electrons that are paired, and then the three unpaired valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons, 2s2, 2p4, for a total of six electrons in the outermost energy level. 2s, up, down, 2p, up, 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 and then the fourth electron goes down. When we do the dot diagram, it's going to look the same way. We'll draw the symbol for oxygen. The first two electrons are paired together. Then up, 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 and then we go back and put in our down. Nitrogen has three unpaired valence electrons. It can form three covalent bonds. Oxygen has two unpaired valence electrons. It can form two covalent bonds. Bromine has seven valence electrons. 4s2, 4p5. Adds up to the seven valence electrons. 4s, up, down, 4p. Five electrons, up, up, up down, down, meaning there's only one unpaired electron. Let's put that together with the dot diagram. The
the two S electrons go together, up, 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 down, 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 down. Only one unpaired electron, bromine can form a single covalent bond. Argon has eight valence electrons. 3s2, 3p6 adds up to eight. 3s, up, down, 3p, up, 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 down, down, down. There are no unpaired valence electrons. So the first two, the S's go together, then the P's, up, 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 down, 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 down. Argon has a complete or stable octet of valence electrons. Argon, being a noble gas, is not capable of forming chemical bonds, which is why its ion charge or oxidation number is zero. It will not form an ion no matter what you try to react it with. Eight valence electrons is called a stable octet. So we could do this for any element on the periodic table. Let's say we want to get the dot diagram for magnesium. Magnesium has a configuration of 2A2, two, two valence electrons. So we draw the symbol and we put the first two dots together. And again, it doesn't matter what side you start dotting on, as long as you're consistent. Silicon is listed as being 2, 8, 4. So it has four valence electrons. So we'll draw the symbol of silicon. The first two will get put together, those are the S. Then the remaining two, P up, P up. And it doesn't matter what side we start dotting from, as long as you are consistent with the way you dot, as long as the first two dots are together and then the other two dots are unpaired. The same could be said for fluorine. Fluorine is 2-7, so that would be F with seven dots. One, two for the first two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it doesn't matter what side you start dotting on or even what direction you go in, as long as you're consistent. And at the end, you only have one unpaired electron. And that's how you do dot diagrams. You're going to be able to use these to create molecules because now you'll know exactly how many covalent bonds an atom is going to be able to form.